Delaware Tech, Chem 100, Chem 110, Unit 1 continued, rounding numbers. Rounding happens at the last significant digit, and it happens by looking at the digit after the last significant digit to decide how to round the last significant digit. If the digit after the last significant digit is 0 to 4, then we'll round the last significant digit down, and that means we don't change it at all. For example, 3.64, if we round that to the nearest tenth, which would be where the 6 is at, that would be rounded to 3.6. Another way to say that in this particular case is if we rounded this number to only two significant digits, you'll notice there are three there now, if we rounded this to two significant digits, that would also be 3.6. Now, if the digit after the last significant digit is 5 to 9, then we round the last significant digit up. That is, it increases by 1. So, 3.65, if I'm telling you we're rounding it to the nearest tenth, well, the, that means the last significant digit is the 6, and the one after that is the 5. That's the one we're looking at to tell. 5 is obviously greater, uh, 5 is obviously greater than 0 through 4. It's between 5 and 9, and therefore 5 tells you to round the 6 up. The other way to say that would be if I asked you to round this to only two significant digits, so 3.65 would be rounded to 3.7. So here are a lot of different examples, and the first column is if you were asked to round to a certain number of significant digits, and the second column is if you were asked to round to a specific decimal place. So let's look at the first example on the left. 43,325 to three significant digits. Well, that means we keep the four, we keep the five, and the, the first three in this number is our last significant digit. It's our third significant digit, it's the last one. Therefore, two is the number we're gonna look at to tell what, what we're gonna do to number three. So two is obviously a low number, it's between zero and four, and therefore, the 453 portion of this number stays as 453. The 3 does not change. However, we still have two more decimal places that we need to fill with placekeepers, and our placekeepers are, of course, zeros. So our number would be 45,300. Now, I want you to note here something. Whenever you round a number, either by sig figs or decimal place, your new answer should be something similar to your old answer. In other words, your new answer in this case should not be 453. 453 is nowhere close to 45,323. However, 45,300 is pretty close to 45,323. So that's your little check at the end. Is my answer close to my old number or is it completely different? 0 0.566030 to two sig figs. Well, our first sig fig is a five. Our second sig fig is the six immediately after that. So we know we're gonna keep the five for sure. So it's gonna be 0 0.5. So what do we do with that first six? Well, the, the second six tells us we have to round the first six up to a seven. And the rest of these positions are not going to be there because we're only asked for two significant figures. So your answer must have only two significant figures. So 0.57 satisfies both conditions. It's about the same as the original number, but it only has two significant figures, two sig figs. 5,099 to two sig figs. That means we, we're going to look at the five and the zero as our positions that we're keeping and the 9 that follows the 0, we'll, we'll use that to determine what to do with the 0. Well, obviously 9 is a high number, therefore the 0 will be rounded to 1. So we know the first things we're going to write are 5, 1. And what do we do with those next decimal places? Well, we know the number originally was about 5,000 something. Therefore, our final answer should be 5,100. This shows that the number is close to the old number. 5,100 is very close to 5,099, and it only has two sig figs. 
The next problem is an unusual one. Uh, I won't give it on an exam, but you do occasionally see it on laboratory assignments. Five to three sig figs. Well, five only has one sig fig. How do you add more sig figs to a number that only has one? Well, you do that by adding zeros without changing the general value of the five. And the way to do that is to write 5.00. This number has three sig figs, but it still has the same value as five. Likewise, 0 0.04 to three sig figs, well, 0 0.04 has only one significant figure, the four. The other two are placekeepers. Therefore, to make it three sig figs, we have to add two more zeros. Because these are zeros that are considered significant, how do we know that? Well, we didn't need to write them, but we did, and therefore they must have been important. 91060 to three sig figs. Well, it has four sig figs right now. We only want three of those, nine, one, and we have to decide what to do with the zero. Well, the six tells us to round up 91, 100. Point six with a line over it. The line over it tells us to repeat anything under the line over it. So that means 0 0.6 with a line over it is the same thing as saying 0 0.66666 forever. It's repeating six. And to satisfy the three significant digits, well, you have to round the third significant digit. And therefore, that will be point zero, uh, 0 0.66. 7 as opposed to 0 0.66 repeating forever. 0 0.0481 where the 81 is repeating, this refers to the fact that this number would be 0 0.048181 forever. The 81 would be repeated infinitely. But you only want three significant digits. Well, our three sig figs that are shown are 481. So we would write 0 0.0481. However, the very next digit we know will be an 8 because the 8 1 is repeating. Therefore, this is really 0 0.0481 and 8 is right after that. The 8 tells us to round the 1 up. So this would be recorded as 0 0.0842. Scientific notation is much easier to deal with. 6.04. Uh, 6.4511 times 10 to the 3 to two significant digits. Well, we know that all of these are significant, and we just want two of these, so we round the 4 up because the 5 is a large number. 5 tells us to round the 4 up, so it's 6.5 times 10 to the 3. Minus 1.009 times 10 to the minus 5. Three sig figs. That means we're going to keep the, the negative 1. We're going to keep the first 0. And we're going to decide what to do with the last zero, the second zero. Well, 9 tells us to round it up and don't write anything more. So it's negative 1.01 times 10 to the minus 5. 7171.7171 to 3 sig figs. Well, that means we keep the first 7. We keep the first 1. The next 7 is the one we're going to look at. And the one that follows it, the one right before the decimal place, tells us that we don't need to round that 7 up. So we know it's going to read 717 something. That something has to be a 0. So therefore, this rounded to, set to three sig figs would be 7,170. Now notice, I don't write any more placekeepers after the decimal place, because those would tell me there are extra significant digits, and we only want three. Likewise, I do not write the decimal point, because the decimal point would tell the reader that the zero is significant too, but you are told that only three of these digits are significant. Let's look at rounding by decimal place. So now you've got the same number, 45,323 is when we did to three, dec three sig figs. We're rounding it now to the thousands place. Well. In the thousands place, we have a five. The five is sitting in the thousands place. So we ask the question, is the number after it a high number or a low number? Well, three is a low number. Therefore, the five will stay the same. So it will be four, five, and the remainder will be filled in with placekeeper zeros. Again, we're going to look at the same number as over on the left. 
0.566030 to the hundredths place. So this is one hundredth. This is the second place after the decimal. So we've got 0 0.566030. We know we're going to keep the 0 0.5 because that's only to the tenths place. The six, the first six is the one we're going to consider rounding, and the next six will tell us how to round it. Well, the next six tells us to round it up, and therefore, to rounding it to the hundredths place will give us 0.57. How do we know this is correct? Well, first of all, the number is about the same number as what we started with, and the last digit present is in the hundredths place. The last significant digit is in the hundredths place. Let's look at the next one. 5,099 to the hundredths place. So the hundredths place is occupied by a zero right now. And as we already know, if we're going to round to that place, the number will be 5,100. In other words, 5,099 is closer to 5,100 than it is to the hundred below that, which would be just simply 5,000. 5,099 to the tens place, well now we're looking at that first nine, the nine that's in the tens place. And we decide what to do with that nine by looking at the next nine. The next nine tells us we have to round the first nine up. So the first nine will be round up, while nine becomes a ten. So the one goes into the hundreds place, a zero goes into the tens place, and that leaves the ones place to be filled with our placekeeper zero. So again, it will round to the exact same number, but that is because if we counted by tens and we went down to the nearest rounded 10, 5,099 going down to the nearest 10 would be 5,090, and the 10 above that would be 5,100. Well, it's closer to the 5,100 if you're counting by tens, and therefore we end up with the same answer as we got before in this particular case. 0 0.04 to the thousands place. Well, the thousands place isn't even there. So we just fill it in with a zero to show that that zero is now significant because you're asked to round to the thousands place. 9160.811 to the ones place. Well, there's a zero occupying the ones place. That means we look at the eight. The eight tells us to round the zero up to one. And therefore, everything else is dropped. So we don't even write, we don't need to write the decimal point. If we did, it wouldn't matter because the one is already significant and adding the decimal point will not, will not change things. But we don't write zeros to fill in the eight, one, and one spots that were formerly on the right side of the decimal. Point six repeating to the hundredths place. Well, we know the next decimals are six and six. The hundredths place would be filled by the second six. And if we need to round it to that, well, we know the one after that will be another six telling us to round that six up. So we'll end up with 0.67. Notice our number is close to our repeating 0.66666 forever. And the last significant digit is in the hundredths place. 0 0.15, where the one five is repeating. In other words, it's 0 0.15, 15, 15, 15, 15 forever to the thousands place. Well, we know in the thousands place, there's a one, but we know in the 10 thousands place, there is a five. So you could rewrite this as 0.1515, and you know it continues on. Look at the second one and ask yourself, is the five a high number or a low number that follows it? Well, we know it's high, and therefore this will be 0 0.152. It used to be 0.15. 1, 5, et cetera, but now it's 1, 5, 2. It's a number that's very similar to our old number, but it rounds off at the thousandths place. So these are tricky. It's best to write, rewrite the number as 0 0.151515 at least a few times, and then look at the thousandths place and round it to that digit. 8.251 times 10 to the 3 to the hundreds place. Well, now we have to rewrite our, sig fig, our, our scientific notation as a decimal. This number would be written as a decimal as 8,251, because 10 to the 3 is 1,000. 8.251 times 1,000 
is 8,251. We want to round to the hundreds place, which is occupied by the 2. So the 2 would round up to a 3, since there's a 5 after it. So our answer would be 8,300, or if we wanted to keep it in scientific notation, 8.3 times 10 to the 3 power. Notice we do not put zeros after the 3, because those are not significant now that we're rounding to the hundreds place. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 1. Again, you need to, ra to rewrite this as a decimal. Anytime you have, you have significant figures uh, with a question asking for decimal place, but your number's in scientific notation, turn your scientific notation into decimal first. So 0 0.16 would be the same thing as this number in scientific notation. 0 0.16. Well, the tenths place is a 1. The next digit is a 6, so we know we need to round that 1 to a 2, and therefore it is 0 0.2, or 2 times 10 to the minus 1. <clears throat> and our last example, 191.45 to the thousands place, well, there is no thousands place here. We know it's occupied by a 0, so our question is, if we round that 0, does it round up or down? Well, that zero in the thousands place, which is not even written here, is followed by the one, the one in the 191. Well, the one is a low number, so the thousand rounds down. In other words, we have zero thousands as opposed to 1,000. And another way to ask this question would be to say, if I have a number of 191.45, is it closer to zero thousands or 1,000? Well, it's clearly closer to zero thousands. So we would simply write zero. And we'll stop here.